Hey, Ross, welcome back. Good to be back. I'm with uh, Ross Robbins of Shin Consulting out of Colorado. I'm Jerry Rulo with the SellingMoreHomesNetwork.com. Uh, we've had Ross on the program here, I think three or four programs here, and wanted him back again. I just I love to attend Ross's programs and seminars, and whenever I can catch them, I'm just hungry for more information. And, and, and Ross, I, I, I thought that this quick little session, and I know we got only got three or four minutes here, but the customer comes in, they're capable of buying, let's just say they're an ba aging baby boomer, okay. they're going to retire or move into this home, there is no real immediate reason they need to do it now, whether they do it today or six months or a year from now, it's not a big deal, okay? there's no urgency involved. Uh, and I've seen you do this on stage in presentations, is, is appealing to their emotions and why now is a good time to buy versus down the road. Uh, can, can, can you run through this thing? You bet. Okay. Will you role play with me for a minute? Well, well let's and, try it. And you be the, the aging baby boomer? Okay, can sure. You, can you get yourself into that role? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Um, <clears throat> So you've got an interest. You've you've got an interest. You come into my uh, community and you found something you like. Yeah, I really like that home. But you know what? Uh, I mean, I don't have to move right now. We would like to move, but you know, I, I don't know if we need to do it now or maybe just wait till next year to see what the market does or what have you. Jerry, of course you don't have to do it now. The, the, this has been told. Everybody's saying is just wait and see, and you're not. It's not like we're going to have 400 buyers come in and take the houses away. Right, yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a hobby? Yeah, yeah. What, what's your I, hobby? Uh, I do uh, coin collecting. And really? Yeah, I, I don't do it aggressively, but I like to collect coins and uh, especially finding the old copper pennies. And you know, it's it's not I'm not an avid coin collector, but yeah, it's it's hey, fun. Do you ever buy coins or buy, buy I, collections? Or? I I have, but but not recently. I've been trying to save. Uh, like everyone else in the country, uh, save the quarters with each state for my grandkids. You know? Sure. <laughs> you know, I have a, a coin collecting is not something I'm f enough familiar with that I can really see how it works. But I know there's some coins that have really remarkable yeah. value, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, right. And if you were a passionate coin collector, can you imagine yourself coming across one of those coins and saying, "Gee, I'd sure like to have that." Right. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Or I wish I would have bought that. I wish I would have bought I've that. I've done that a few times, you know. Have you ever bought a coin that you thought, God, I don't know, I'm kind of taking a flying leap here. I'm going a little farther than I should, but what the heck? It's my collection. It's my dream. Yeah. Have yeah. you done that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I buy the proof sets. Uh, again, not I've for me. i too. But I buy it for my, for my kids and hopefully the grandkids. And again, probably paying a little bit over the dollar right now to buy it, but for my grandkids, it's going to be a proof that's 20 years ago or whatever. Now, you know you could wait on those. Probably. Yeah. You could buy them all at once and try to buy them all. You could buy somebody's collection. Yeah, that's true. What I'd like to share with you is that when we are operating from something that's a dream and uh, something that we want, and that it fulfills that dream, then all of a sudden it becomes important to do it now, doesn't it? Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And I would suggest to you, and I've talked to you and your wife a number of times, that this is one of those things that's a dream for you. You know you're going to do it sometime, right? Right. Yeah. So. Let me share a story from my personal past about doing it now. We always seem to think that we can do it next month or next year or something, but where is it written down that we have next month or next year? And what if you don't have the chance to enjoy this place like you really want to? I personally, on November 12th of 2007, I remember that. I was dead. I remember that. I was concerned. I was, I was dead. <laughs> I literally was dead, and thank God for paramedics who came back yeah. and hit me with the paddles yeah. and brought me back to life. And thank God for a wonderful doctor who put a stent in my heart and opened it back up, and I'm doing great, and I'm having a ball. But the thing, one of the things that changed in my life is I stopped putting stuff off. It isn't a matter of whether I can do it anymore. It's a matter of whether I want to do it. And when I want to do it, I'll figure out a way to do sure. it. And I suggest to you that that's all we can do in our lives. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I guess it does. I mean, we, we want this home. Uh, again, yeah, may, maybe what you're saying is we should start enjoying it now versus next next month or next year. Sounds to me like that's what you're saying. <laughs> well, probably. Uh, that, that's a great analogy. 
and again, uh, uh, what I'd like to kind of go back through here with what Ross did to me in our quick role playing thing is, is he recap identified? Recap the elements, huh? Should, do you want me to recap? Yeah, the recap elements? the elements. All right, here's the elements that we did. First thing is I got agreement with him on the concept. Right. Second thing is I put it in his sphere of recognition. In other words, his hobby, not mine. And I got him to acknowledge and admit that he had, in fact, in the past, and we have all done this, yeah. it's a universal, that we have all, all bought something that we wanted and not postponed it because we wanted it now. And frequently we pay too much when we do that. Right. And it's still okay because we love it and it's worth it. And then the last thing I did is I got back into my, I shared something of myself. It's what I call, it's the third part of my sales quadrant is I have to share something of myself to connect. If, 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 it's all, if I'm asking all the questions, I'm just an interrogator. I need to now share something. So I did, something very personal and very real. And then he got it. I could see in his face that he got it. And so at that point, I say, I asked him a, a tie-down question, as we have done before. And he started saying, it sounds to me like I should do, I should do this now. You're telling me that I should do this now, and I said, no, it sounds to me like you're telling me. You. <laughs> yeah. and, and when he's telling himself that, then we're halfway there, or 90% right, yeah. of the way there. Yeah, that's great. You know, uh, Ross talks about the sales quatrain, uh, and in our, our latest book, uh, Selling More Homes uh, the Easy Way, uh, Ross is uh, one of the chapters in there. Uh, <laughs> I believe you're chapter nine. I, I forget what chapter you're on there, but uh, there's a whole chapter on uh, Ross's uh, sales quatrain. So uh, if you go to sellingmorehomesnetwork.com, uh, if you go to the uh, book section, you can see that book there. If you go to the audio programs, uh, you can see some of the audio programs that Ross has done with us uh, at seminars in uh, different parts of the country. So uh, uh, once again, I thank you for coming on our program Absolutely with us. Absolutely, my pleasure. And uh, thanks for watching and listening to SellingMoreHomesNetwork.com. I'm Jerry Rulo, and again, Ross Robin, thank you.